What's going on, everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. So, look, I think you're a loser and a weirdo if you are like actively and vigorously seeking out links um, and URLs so you can watch the FTC, ABK, what other other acronym trial and, and hearing. I think you're a weirdo if you're if you're doing that because I just don't get why y'all are so invested. It just really makes no sense to me. I do have to admit that there are some details and information that have come out of this hearing that is interesting and relevant to us as gamers. But it'll be a cold day in hell. I mean, I, I mean, freezing day in hell before I ever sit down and use my precious time to watch some hearing and then go on Twitter and, and then tag the executives of either company and give them a virtual high five like we're friends or something cold I'm, I'm talking about the coldest day in hell if you're doing that something's wrong with you and you need to re like reevaluate what real life is what reality is because you're detached but like i said some interesting information has actually you know come, come from this um and a major part of that is studios and publishers that at that um xbox and microsoft had on their hit list um, back in 2021. So shout out to all the information distributors and the bullet point gods um, that whenever a large amount of information comes out, they take it upon themselves to parse out the information and uh, deliver it in a very digestible and, consum and, and consumable way for you know us, the gamers and, and the readers, because ain't no way as a self-respecting respecting gamer and human being that I'm going to go through a 500 page document to learn anything about some studio acquisition, anything like that, not doing it. Um, and it is, it is unfortunate because, uh, even though, yes, I'm, I'm talking about it right now. Um, this acquisition talk does make me sick in the manner that gamers have it right now. Right. Um, I get tired of the acquisition on top of acquisition talk. It's like that's what gamers get excited for nowadays, and that's weird. Just 10, 15 years ago, this is not the way we would have conversations about acquisitions. Back then, um, you know, the acquisition talk would be more about gamer. As far as the gamers were concerned, it would be what am I going to get out of this acquisition? That's what gamers were concerned about before when an acquisition happened. And it wasn't that big of an event, right? I understand it's happening more, so that's why the conversation about it happens more now. But before, gamers were more concerned about what they got out of it. Now, gamers are more concerned about the competition and the arms race of who gets a new toy more, more than what is that new toy going to do for me. Now it's like, ooh, look what I got. And ooh, look what I got. And it's like, why aren't you concerned about what are you what you're going to get out of it? Gamers seem to get like very you could you could like read their tweets and 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 see that they get excited for acquisitions when when there's really sometimes no rhyme or reason for for why it's just that I got a new thing. Some, it doesn't even they don't even seem to care if it's something they actually care about. It's just like, "Oh, I got a new thing." Anyway, I'm going to get more more into that. Um because my stance, and I've said this through all this acquisition talk, my stance is if you make an acquisition, the point of that acquisition should be to make that studio better than they were before. Through resources, money, yes, of course, but also a big part of it is culture and leadership. Because just money and resources doesn't actually help a studio get better and, and grow. Yeah, grow, I guess, you know, in a quantity way, it'll help them grow, but become better at what they do. That takes culture and, and also leadership. And I think a lot of people miss out on that important part rather than just grabbing studios up to grab studios up. And I'm not saying that that's what Microsoft has done with all of their acquisitions, but I think that's how a lot of these new gamers uh, look at it. Oh, let's just grab everything up for the sake of grabbing it up. But let's get to this. So this, these are some of the developers that uh, Xbox and Microsoft and Xbox had on their list um, to watch.
back in 2021. And it's, it's possible that they still have some of these. And this is there's like two other um, pages to look at. Um, it's possible they still have some of these developers on their list now. So we can see some of these developers I've never even heard of. Um, like I've never heard of A44, Bonfire Studios, uh, Face Punch, Fat Shark, no, Heart Machine, never heard of them. Of course, I know, Dream, uh, you know, uh, I've heard of Dream Haven, I think. Uh, of course, Ember Labs, uh, Ghost Ship, Hazel Light, uh, Hello Games, of course, Moon Studios, Munfish, Proletariat, Striking Distance Studios, know all of them. But there are a bunch of ones that I have no idea what, what they are. Um, and I don't necessarily have a pro I don't have a problem with with PlayStation has a Sony and PlayStation has a list like this. We haven't seen it, but we know they have a list like this because they talk about like their mergers and acquisition uh, goals and stuff like that. So, of course, they have, you know, a hit list, a watch list of, de of developers that they would possibly want to get and that they would work on getting it. So this is not exclusive to, to, to Xbox and Microsoft, of course. Um, and I don't necessarily actually don't have a problem with any of these uh, studios, studios that they have on their watch list, because once again, I believe acquisitions are to make the studio better. And a lot of these are kind of like indie style studios. So providing them with more resources, because that's that's a big thing with indie with when, when it comes to indie uh, studios is that's a lot of them have the creativity and the talent. It's the money that they don't have. So even though I think, uh, as I said, culture and leadership will always be important no matter what the type of studio, for indie studios, that's clearly, uh, you know, a big part of it. So uh, shout out to Idle Sloth if I didn't say that already. Um, so this is a uh, mergers and acquisition final watch list. So on here, you got Thunderful, which is apparently a mobile game studio, Supergiant Games, we know them from Hades, Niantic, Play, uh, Playrix, Zynga, um, and it, we could see Bungie on here, PlayStation ended up, or Sony rather, ended up getting them, IO Interactive, which I think uh, they had said that IO, actually, IO Interactive, one of their projects is actually going to be an Xbox exclusive. That was found out through, um, through, through this whole you know, the shit being revealed through this trial and Scopely. Um, and we also learned that uh, um, Ninja Theory was purchased for, I think, what is it, $117 million? Was it $117 million? Something, something like that. And uh, that, see, what I'll say shortly about that is people are having the conversation whether, you know, they overpaid or underpaid. Um, they paid the premium for talent because that's what's getting more and more rare in the industry these days is, is, the, is the talent. Um, because you can buy a whole bunch of studios, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get or retain the, the talent and, and the best talent. Um, so what they paid for, I believe, was, was the talent because Ninja Theory was, at the time when they, were, when they were acquired in 2008, they were like the size of an indie studio, almost. Um, and they didn't own anything besides Hellblade. So they had no ownership, damn near, besides a, a new IP, and they, ha they, they were small. So you, I, I won't say that. So I'll say they, they, pay, they paid the premium, right? I don't think, like, they, it wasn't a steal is what I'm saying. And here are more studios, Behavior Interactive, People Can Fly, Housemark, Remedy, um, Crytek. You know, Bungie's here again, uh, IO. They really seem to have a hard on for our IO. Supergiant Games, we've seen that before. Uh, Paradox Interactive and Sega. So Sega, you know, is one of those that had a lot of conversation um, happening uh, yesterday. People were having, you know, bringing up Sega a lot from, from this information. So here, here's, my, here's my thing about all this stuff, right? As I said, the point of an acquisition, at least to me, is to make the studio you are acquiring better through all the ways I already already said. But the, the reason Microsoft and Xbox seems to be buying or targeting some studios, some, not all, is to just bolster Game Pass. 
And it is possible that you can do both. You can buy a studio to bolster Game Pass and to grow and to grow them to be better. But that doesn't mean that two, the two things don't necessarily happen naturally together is what I'm saying. And with some of these things they're targeting and some of the things they've even purchased already, it's it really seemed like, OK, Game Pass is this is this Sarlacc, Sarlacc pit. Right. It's just this never ending hole and we need to constantly support it. So we need to uh, consume as as many uh, machines that can create things for us so we can get this this constant output to justify Game Pass and to justify our subscription service. That seems to be, in my evaluation, the goal of these acquisitions more than to actually buy studios that fit within our culture and fit within um, you know, what we are trying, trying to do and who our identity is. Rather, you know, it seems to be, it doesn't seem to be that. It seems to be put more stuff in Game Pass, right? So, and my concern, my concern is that this is not me hating on, on Game Pass, but I don't think a lot of fans of this, I don't think they really think about the ramifications or what the strategy is or why, or when they acquire, who they aim to acquire, what the rhyme or reason is. Like, I, when I read these comments, I don't see anybody saying like, oh, this, this would be a bad acquisition. Every acquisition they've made or every acquisition they've, they've said that they've tried to or aim to, every, every fan I've seen, I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Every acquisition is a good idea. Every, every acquisition? There's not one like, you're, you're like, where you're like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Every acquisition is good? That doesn't make any sense. Every acquisition cannot be good. Every acquisition is not a fit unless you believe there's no such thing as a studio that's not a fit and you could just acquire anybody and just make them do what they do. And I don't believe that. I think there are certain weird fits. Listen, as a PlayStation fan, I found it weird that PlayStation acquired Bungie. I, I said I understand why. They, the main reason they seemed to get them was for uh, you know, their live service knowledge and they wanted them to be the high council of live service. But you can go watch my video on when I made it. That's weird to me. And I said, I said it doesn't do anything for me as a gamer. I'm not like a fan of them buying Bungie because I don't like Destiny. And, this, and at the time, I didn't, we didn't know what game they were making next. But this next game that we've seen, Marathon, we only seen like CGI, it doesn't do anything for me as a gamer. So I'm looking at that acquisition like it doesn't mean anything to me. Currently, it doesn't mean anything to me. It, it, when Marathon finally comes out, it's a high possibility that it still doesn't mean anything to me. So it's weird to me that people just think like with no ramifications, no consequence, um, any acquisition is, is, a, is a good acquisition. Like, are there no like criteria or standards that y'all have for like acquisition or is it just like buy everything and it doesn't matter because they're going to put it in game pass that, that's weird to me even havens when playstation purchased havens i'm looking like that doesn't do anything for me because i haven't seen what what they've what they've uh made um jade raymond's past is sketchy she's jumped around a bunch of places it doesn't do anything for me it's it, that's a that's a weird that's a weird one too so it's strange to me when I see like the, these fans of this stuff, like what, what is really your reason for being a fan of it other than, oh, they got something new. And there are, there are, you know, like when it comes to the Bethesda and the Ninja Theory acquisition, I had no problems with those. No issue. Like those made sense to me. Um, because get, like with Bethesda, Zenimax, right? A lot of their games were failing at the time. A lot of their sequels were poorly performing. I mean, I mean, Evil Within two, two, you know, wasn't a critic, wasn't a wasn't a commercial success. Uh, Dishonored two, not a commercial success. Even Wolfenstein two, all of these games did worse than their original. All of them, 
and I'm big fans of these games. See, th- those are the games under the Zenimax umbrella that I'm a fan of. I'm, I'm not a fan of the Fallouts. I'm not a fan of the Elder Scrolls. It's the, it's the other games that I just named that I'm a fan of. That's what I like. That's what I'm excited for that they're going to make in the future. And I believe we weren't going to get those unless Microsoft purchased them. So that's why I'm like, good. You, you got them. That makes complete sense. You're, you're, you're helping them. You're bailing them out. Once again, you're making them better. You're helping them out. Um, Ninja Theory, same thing. Xbox needed, uh, Xbox needed a studio that can make something, you know, with the high production, uh, with the high production presentation and, and the, you know, the type of, uh, cinematic, um, type of, type of game, because, you know, the, they need they needed that diverse portfolio. They needed one of those. Cool. Makes makes sense. There was a few others, you know, that made sense and a few others that I'm like, eh, I think y'all just pick them up because because they're cheap. Um, I think like I, I think I said like compulsion games. I feel like they kind of picked them up just because they they were there and they they were kind of cheap. We'll we'll see, you know, what their next game turns turns out to be. But it, it's like when you look at some of these like like people talk about Sega. Sega? You you think Sega would be a great fit for Microsoft and X? What about Sega makes you think that that's a oh that's a great fit that would work perfectly? I don't think that that looks strange and that would be a strange fit that Microsoft Xbox game and, and I think I've seen that they would still uh, function as a multi platform developer. But what about Sega and Microsoft makes you think that they go together well? You know you know what I'm saying like. What makes you think this this circle goes in this in this triangle hole? That's how I look at Microsoft and Sega, and I don't I don't like Sega games. I don't think there's one Sega game I even care about. So if they did acquire them, it would mean nothing to me. But my thing is like, what, what what's the strategy? What's the rhyme or reason other than Sonic is going to be in Game Pass, and what other what other other game they make is going to be in Game Pass? Where's the where's the logic? Where's the logic? People, and people are just like, oh, that's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's, there's no bad acquisitions. It, like, really? There's no bad acquisitions? Nothing? Just everything makes sense? And we've seen, and, and it's not like, oh, we can just rely on hypothetical situations because we've seen what happens when an entity purchases and, and, and acquires a whole bunch of studios with no rhyme or reason, and that's Embracer Group, and they had to pretty much shut down um, they had to shut down and, and, and restructure and do all and, and lay off people, do all these type of things because they literally purchased with no rhyme or reason. Not saying Microsoft is is doing it to that extent and to that caliber, but I think they can easily get within that range where, OK, we purchased too much to the point we we can't even manage all of this because it's not easy to manage a whole bunch of studios. and. Listen, I'm going to tell the truth. I think part of the reasons why a lot of these fans are like have no requirement to what makes a good acquisition or a bad acquisition is because they want validation. I think for a long time that they, they felt disrespected, right? Um, how many years have they had to listen to you don't have any games and, you know, you don't you you lack studio any good studios and stuff like that. So it's now. Anything they get is great. It's, it's a child that had no toys. And now, even if all the toys don't even make no sense for the child, like the, the child is, is not, even, not even into Legos, but you get the, the, the complete Lego set. And now they're like, oh, this is great because they never had nothing. So you, you, can, you can get them a thousand toys from the bargain bin section. Doesn't matter. They didn't have anything before. So everything is, is a great is a great buy. Nothing is bad. That's that's kind of how it seems. You know, they 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 just feel like, oh, we went through shit for for so long and for all all those years. So now look at us. We're we're great. We're doing we're doing better. When you can once again, you can argue like a lot of these acquisitions, nothing is really changing. No, nothing like th- th- I've said it before. This whole acquisition that's been going on for like two years it's 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 literally people advocating for games that they already had access to 
and that they're going to have access to in pretty much the same way as they did before. Like, it's insane when you think about it. Like, I understand it, it makes complete sense from Microsoft and Xbox's point of view that they're fighting this hard. But the gamers, there is no reason why gamers should be that in, this invested and fighting this hard for this acquisition. It, it changes almost nothing for you. It's negligent. That's why I don't understand the gamer, the part where gamers are so obsessed with this. What, what, what's, what changes? You get something a bit cheaper? Okay, in Game Pass, uh, that's, that's worth fighting two years for something? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. You can't tell me like Sega makes sense with Xbox. You can't look at all these studios and tell me every one of these would make sense with Xbox. You, you can't tell me that. Some of them I can understand. Even IO. Even IO seems to be like one of those, one of those, uh, they're technically a publisher, right? Yeah. That I'm like, you know what? I can see why they would service Xbox and why Xbox would target them. I could see that. I could absolutely see that. Some, and, and these other smaller studios, absolutely. But stuff like Sega, bro, y'all are just like anything. Yeah, we'll, we'll take it. Anything at this point. Like, come on, bro. And there is a certain like, bro, there is a certain point where even you as a fan of either, you have to have to like come to a point where like, okay, this is too much. Y'all are doing too much. Relax. If you don't feel like that, then you're, you're not really a, I don't think you're a fan of gaming. You're a, you're a fan of a company that you think in your mind is metaphorically winning when you're not gaining anything. Because, like I said, there has to be just some type of grounded and base reasoning to get excited for certain acquisitions. Other, you know, if not, you're just a fanboy. Because like I said, I'm, I don't get excited for every acquisition. I don't think I've been excited for the past three or four acquisitions Sony has made. Don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> really don't. Don't do shit for me. But I think uh, gamers just have to be uh, a little bit more mindful of this type of shit and, and, the, and the results that come from uh, consolidation. Like I said, if Microsoft continues to buy up some smaller studios, I have no problem with that. Some indie studios, even some AA studios, bro, have at it. But this, it's really the, the, the publisher shit. More, that's not a good thing. Like I said, Bethesda, that was cool. Activision, have them, have them. If, you know. But more publishers after that, what the fuck are we doing? As a fan, you have to, it, it, even as a diehard fan, you, you would have to admit like, okay, this is, this is getting egregious. This is getting pointless. Why are you still aiming to buy publishers specifically? Not talking about, I'm not talking about developers. Just speaking facts. Let me know what y'all think about this. Um, hit the like button. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter. All that good shit. And I will catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.